Hello, my name is Julie Beischel, and I'm the Director of Research at the Wimbridge Research Center. Today I'll be talking about the scientific evidence for life after death as demonstrated through the accuracy and experiences of mediums. At the center, we study dying, death, and what comes next. At this time, this primarily involves research with mediums. We define a medium as an individual who regularly experiences communication from the deceased and translates that communication into messages for living sitters during a process called a reading. One of the ways we study mediums is by testing their accuracy under controlled laboratory conditions. The fully masked or quintuple blind protocol we use addresses the normal explanations for the source of a medium's accurate reading, including fraud, cueing by the experimenter, rater bias, and cold reading, including statements so general they could apply to nearly anyone. This protocol has previously produced Bial Foundation funded findings that were peer reviewed and published, summarized in a free Winbridge Research Center fact sheet, and discussed in a previous video. Links to these materials are listed in this video's description. Overall, the data we collected from 58 readings by 20 pre-screened mediums demonstrated that certain mediums can report accurate and specific information about the deceased through a process that we call anomalous information reception, or AIR. That is, without prior knowledge, with no feedback during or after the reading, and without using fraud or deception. However, whether or not this information is coming from the deceased cannot be determined with accuracy data alone. We know that information is not accessed through normal sensory means, so the medium must be using what's called psi. The Greek letter psi is used as an umbrella term for various phenomena traditionally considered anomalous, including the different ways people acquire information without using sensory methods or logical inference. The psi phenomena that are relevant here are telepathy, the transfer between people of information, thoughts, or emotions, clairvoyance, the transfer of information about or the perception of distant objects, events, or situations, precognition, the conscious cognitive awareness of future events that could not be inferred or anticipated, and retrocognition, the transfer of information about an unknown past event that couldn't be determined through inference. Events evolving psi phenomena have been reported by people from all walks of life in every society on record. So although these experiences are considered anomalous in our current time and place, this definition is itself anomalous when compared to the rest of history and geography. What we call psi, other cultures or other times might not even have a name for because it's so normal. Nonetheless, scientific research has supported the reality of psi in modern times. For example, in 1995, University of California statistician Jessica Utz published her findings after reviewing decades of psi research across laboratories and cultures and concluded that psychic functioning has been well established. These findings were republished in 2018. Similarly, Lund University psychology professor Etzel Cardinia recently reviewed more than 125 published findings and meta-analyses and concluded that the evidence provides cumulative support for the reality of psi. Thus, the existence of psi is no longer up for debate. Let's come back to why we're here today. By using laboratory protocols to address the normal sensory explanations for the source of medium's information, we can conclude that they are using psi to receive the information they report. But which kind of psi? There are two competing psi theories. If mediums are using what's called survival psi, they are communicating telepathically with the deceased. If mediums are using what's called somatic psi, they are using precognition telepathy with living persons and or clairvoyance, including of a theoretical psychic reservoir where all information in the universe is stored to get information about the deceased. The root soma, which means body, refers to the body of evidence in the psychic reservoir or the body of the living sitter as examples of the suggested source. Both of these theories are just that, theories. Neither can be proven. Both are equally plausible and nothing a medium can say during a reading can break the tie. 
If a medium reports something the sitter didn't know but someone else did, that can be explained as the medium using somatic psi to telepathically read that other person. If medium describes an event that hasn't happened yet, that can be explained as precognitive somatic psi from the future. Either of those cases can also be explained by communication with the deceased. And no matter how many more accuracy experiments we run, this tie would remain. However, medium's experiences are that the two are different. We can't ask mediums to do somatic psi, it's just a theory, but we can use psychic readings for the living as a surrogate or placeholder during experiments. When describing the two types of experiences, one Winbridge medium noted, a psychic reading is like reading a book, a mediumship reading is like seeing a play. I have previously shared these other comments from Winbridge mediums about the differences between mediumistic and psychic experiences. One noted, it's very different. It's like listening to someone versus looking myself. Another described that in a mediumship reading, it feels like someone is talking to me. With psychic readings, it's information about someone. And another said, with mediumship, I get to meet new people all the time. Psychic information is boring. To bring this into the lab, we used methods from a field called phenomenology, which is the study of experiences as they are experienced by the experiencer. I'll briefly review the relevant bits from three studies my colleagues and I performed, comparing mediumship readings for the deceased using survival psi and during psychic readings for the living to represent the concept of somatic psi. I have nicknamed these studies UVO as shorthand for survival psi versus somatic psi. In the UVO-1 study, we asked six pre-screened and tested Winbridge certified research mediums to describe their experiences when communicating with the deceased during mediumship readings and also during psychic readings about the living. We confirmed that they reported being able to distinguish between the two, and my colleagues discovered common themes in the two types of descriptions. For example, survival psi experiences were described as including signs confirming the presence of the deceased. These included visual signs like light flashes, auditory signs like ringing sounds, and physical signs like heat or vibrations. One participant reported, I have asked for communication and suddenly hear inside my ears a high ringing sound. I am thrilled to know this as contact. The mediums also reported experiencing the deceased as separate independent entities capable of, for example, arguing with or startling them. One participant said, now you would think being a medium, I would want to look and connect with them sitting on the edge of my bed. What really happens is they startle me, which makes me freak out. These types of experiences were not included in descriptions of psychic readings for the living. In the UVO 2 study, we asked 14 Winbridge certified research mediums and 113 self-identified mediums. Can you tell the difference between communication from the deceased and psychic information about the living? Roughly 90% of the participants responded yes. We then asked them in a counterbalanced order, in your own words, describe your experiences when receiving communication from the, the, from the deceased, and in your own words, describe your experiences when getting psychic information about the living. Complete responses were provided by 122 participants, and the resulting 244 narratives, 122 mediumship, 122 psychic, were quantitatively and qualitatively analyzed. To compare the medium's descriptions of the two experiences, we used text analysis software called Linguistic Inquiry and Word Count, the abbreviation is pronounced Luke, to count up the number of words in various psychologically meaningful categories. We found several significant differences in the descriptions of the two types of readings that I will just summarize here. When comparing descriptions of communication with the deceased and psychic readings for the living, what we found was that descriptions of mediumistic experiences contain more words describing interpersonal relationships, the multiple sensory modes involved in the experience, food and cooking, the past, and spirituality than did descriptions of psychic reading experiences. Conversely, descriptions of mediumistic communication contain significantly fewer words describing the cognitive process refl reflected by the Luke category of insight. 
This finding suggests that mediumistic communication may be a process that is more intuitive than analytical, metaphorically more right-brained than left-brained, when compared to psychic readings for the living. That these quantitative differences existed in the description supports the concept that communication with the deceased is experienced as different from acquiring psychic information about the living. For the UVO2 study qualitative exploration, content analysis was used to identify consistent patterns or themes within the text. One common theme found was a triangulated model of communication with information described as coming from the deceased being received by the medium and communicated to the sitter. The discarnate was described as controlling what information the medium receives and also when the information is sent. One participant noted that the discarnates give the information they wish to convey, and then we go wherever spirit wants to go. The purpose of the UVO3 study was to see if medium's abilities to differentiate between the two psi experiences would hold up under blinded laboratory conditions. The UVO3 study examined under randomized counterbalance and blinded conditions with pre-screened participants the phenomenology of mediumship readings for deceased targets in which survival size is used, and of psychic readings for living target, which acts as a surrogate for somatic psi. The study consisted of 10 Winbird certified research mediums participating in two counterbalance experimental conditions, a blinded reading for a living target person and a blinded reading for a deceased target person, without knowing which was which, or even if they would be reading for two living people, two deceased people, or one of each. They all read for one of each. During 19 of the 20 readings, the medium mentioned their impressions about whether the target was living or deceased. 74% of those times, those impressions were accurate, which is statistically significant portion. 50% is what could be expected if they were just guessing. After each of the 20 readings, the 10 mediums completed a questionnaire called the Phenomenology of Consciousness Inventory, or PCI. The PCI is a valid, reliable, widely used 53-item instrument that quantifies, and we won't go through all of these, 26 different dimensions of consciousness, including anger, sadness, sense of time, mental imagery, awareness of self, volitional control, memory, and love. And love was the dimension we were interested in. Mediums often talk about love as being related to their work. When I informally asked the Winbridge mediums about their experiences for the 2014 book From the Mouths of Mediums, their responses often involved love. For example, Joanne Gerber reported that the energy of love is the bond between the physical and spiritual worlds. Kim Russo described mediumship readings as including many emotions running through my body, especially love. The emotion of love comes to me in the strongest way. Because of these types of statements, we specifically predicted that love, as quantified by the PCI questionnaire, would be experienced to a greater degree during the blinded readings for deceased targets when compared to blinded readings for living targets. That is, the mediums would feel more love during blinded mediumship readings for the deceased than they would during blinded psychic readings for the living. And lo and behold, our prediction was confirmed. The analysis demonstrated a significant difference between the love felt during blinded readings for deceased targets compared to blinded readings for living targets. So this study demonstrated that even under blinded conditions, mediums can feel the difference between communication with the deceased and regular psychic functioning. When we combine the finding that certain mediums can report accurate and specific information about the deceased under blinded conditions, using anomalous information reception, or AIR, with the findings that they can distinguish between communication from the deceased and psi with the living as demonstrated using qualitative and quantitative methods, even under blinded conditions. This allows us to conclude that survival psi is the better explanation for the source of the information the mediums reported during the blinded accuracy testing, which demonstrated AIR. Finally, we can break this tie, and until empirical research collected under controlled conditions demonstrates something different, this matter has been settled. So what does all this mean? 
Based on all the data we've collected to date, the best explanation for modern mediumship is that at least some mediums are talking to the dead. This means that you will most likely continue to exist after your physical death and be able to continue the loving relationships you have with the living people in your current life. I hope you enjoyed this review of the findings from the three UVO studies, and I thank you for your interest and attention. I am also grateful for my co-researchers, the participants who volunteered for these studies, and the Bial Foundation for their support.